Everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. and I'm joined by the man that got the giggles, Rich Stambolian. I do got the giggles. You did a nice little slate there in the beginning. <laughs> what did I do? You did a like, like nice little slate. Yeah, I had like, to uh, sound. Yeah, recording. <laughs> sound recording. Uh, what's going on, guys? What's up, man? How you doing? How are you? I am not bad. Um, You're not great either, but not bad. I mean, I'm not bad. You know, like I feel like if I go, oh, I'm fantastic. People go, yeah, okay. How people, you doing? Uh, you know, I feel a lot better. Uh, last week I was kind of out of it. Uh, we had a uh, we had a couple a uh, couple breaks. You know, I didn't do Observer because of Easter, and oh, the week yeah. prior I was sick, mm-hmm. and uh, and then last week we didn't do a show. Obviously, yeah. I felt like crap all yeah. week, and uh, you know, now we're back. Yeah, you got like old school, like World War One malaria. <laughs> that's what the doctor said, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. He's like, dude, how'd you get this? The last time someone was sick like this was 1910. <laughs> you know? Um, no, man, I feel good. It was just like a little bug I got, you know? I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a week off, too. Good, man. We normally take the week like after rum- uh, after Mania off. Yeah, yeah. Always, sure. historically. Like after like the big paper, we always sick, but we, we've been going like a thousand miles an hour. So no time for that. But we are back today with a lot of professional wrestling news. Mm-hmm. It's Thursday morning, Matt Men edition. A lot of stuff to cover. Guys, if you enjoy the show, hit the Super Chat button. You could fund us anything you want. Or or you could head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast. Fund us there. Dollar a show, $2 a show, whatever you want to do. Uh, $10 a month. Whatever you feel like doing. We welcome it. Yes. Uh, we have a busy summer coming up. Obviously, a lot of great shows coming up. New Japan Forbidden Door. We have not spoken about that yet. This would be the first oh, time we're talking about this. Very excited. Uh, we have that. <clears throat> we have Double or Nothing. Main event has been announced for that show. Amazing mm-hmm. that they've sold out that show with no main event. Dude. You know? I mean, it's hot, man. It's a hot, it's a hot product. Uh, listen, I may need to change that hashtag from Viva Las Vegas to hashtag Sweet Home Chicago. Sweet Home Chicago, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're thinking about going to that Chicago show. I may do like a day trip. Yeah, nice maybe little... I'll do like a nice little day trip. That sounds great. I'll fly out. Uh, maybe I'll fly out like Saturday. Yeah, have like a Saturday in Chicago, mm-hmm. hang out, and then Sunday the pay per view and fly back Monday morning. It's in a great area. Like that's it's like, it's like Chicago proper. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like Metro Chicago. So we can ostensibly probably take a subway there. I'm sure. I'm but, sure. And we can reenact the uh, the intro to Perfect Strangers. Yes, we can. Which would be a dream come true. Which would actually be a dream come true for both of us. Uh, where do you want to begin today? Let's talk about um, the stadium shows that WWE is All starting right. to run. Uh, apparently, WWE intends to run more stadium shows moving forward in uh, 2023. Uh, this year, 2022, they will be running eight that we know of, which is, I think, a lot. Yeah, so uh, I had a very nice conversation with someone at WWE. Very I think nice. I told you about this yes. a little bit. Uh, and we were just, it was actually like a non-wrestling conversation that like, mm-hmm. you know, like I asked about uh, the cops are here. By the way, do you hear this? <laughs> yeah, uh, they're chasing the Batman. Those are the those are the stripper cops you hired. Yeah, right? yeah, that's <laughs> they're here for you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, so I I had a conversation with someone over there, and we were having a couple drinks and just shooting the shit. And I brought up the stadium concept, right? Because I was like, you guys are running a ton of stadium shows. I'm mm-hmm. like, is the goal to sell them all out? And he's like, listen. He goes for some of them. Obviously, that's always the goal, like a WrestleMania yeah. or like a SummerSlam. You really want to sell as much as you can uh the show in uh cardiff that yeah. that their, their goal is to pack that place out right but you know you're also getting some other ones like money in the bank right and we were in vegas when they announced that yes. last year at SummerSlam, and we all looked at each other like well why are they doing money in the bank here well the reality <laughs> is they got a great rent on that building right but i think we also looked at each other because it was like july 4th weekend yeah and we uh, thought about it somebody no we didn't somebody turned right. around and was like what do you boys think and we were like no, <laughs> no we, I, we thought about it for like a second a second a split yeah. second um, uh, a nanosecond yeah uh i so the concept here is and i posted this on twitter yesterday right uh-huh. and a lot of people read it wrong where they took it as wwe would be running all their ple's as stadium shows which is not Anything that's going to happen. However, Mm -hmm. think about it this way. You have eight of them this year. Right? Rumble in St. Louis. Elimination Chamber, Saudi Arabia. WrestleMania two nights in Dallas. Money in the Bank, Las Vegas. SummerSlam in Nashville. 
the Cardiff show and the Saudi show that's coming up at the end of September, early October that they're working on the date. Yeah. I, I think it's leaning towards early October this time. Uh, and I think that'll be a TLC show. Interesting. So it, when I ask, it, it's a very simple thing. The rate on these, the many stadiums are scalable mm -hmm. now, right? And the best example that was given to me by someone that's in the ticketing business is like, look at Monster Jam, right? Sure. Monster Jam is a big deal. Yeah. Or it was in the 80s. Right. Now, I don't know how much of a big deal it is, but they're not selling 65,000 seats in uh, in MetLife Stadium. Right, right, right. And they're not renting that building out with the expectation of selling us 65,000 seats in that building. Mm -hmm. But maybe they'll get 20,000 or 35,000. Right. You know? That rate is different. So uh, these buildings sit empty majority of the year. I mean, if you're an NFL stadium, mm -hmm. you're only running, you know, how many weeks? Eight weeks? Nine weeks? Right, right, right. In your stadium? Plus whatever, you know, small events that you hold throughout the year. But it's not every week. It's not every day. So you want to scale these things and make some money on the building. This is what WWE is able to do. So the oh, concept yeah. of having to go into a money in the bank in Las Vegas and sell out 65,000 seats was never there. However, they would like to come close to 30. Yeah. And if they can, that's better than 15. This, I think the bigger arenas work very interestingly for them, especially like let's take the... Uh, show that we went to at Legion Stadium SummerSlam yeah. last year, right? Huge venue, right? Yeah. Lots of private suites, areas and bars, but also how many mega merch booths did you see inside that place huh. that were yeah. constantly busy? Yeah. You know? Well, we had a very different experience in that building because yeah. I had... Do you remember what a disaster that building was for people? That show was a nightmare. Y yes remember when the, no. when the credit cards went down? Well, oh yeah that was but that, that was a global outage right that was like a huge thing where they there were signs everywhere that were bandying about we're the only non 100 percent non-cash arena in the country and then 15 minutes later everything it was down. like yeah <laughs> sorry yeah because it was a global outage for yeah. all of the uh the, the, POS, the, system the, the pos system or whatever the processing system so that was a problem, but I didn't feel that the atmosphere was lacking. I didn't feel... Yeah. But, like, we were... We also had, like, sweet access. We had a little bit of a little different environment. But, listen, yeah. in all reality... We got I, the perks. We got the perks. I, but we sat in a normal seat. Yes. We, you know, and I didn't feel that it was hindered by the fact that we didn't have 65,000 people in there. We had yeah. 35,000 in there. Um, I thought they put on a great show. I just feel that I get the concept behind this. I think mm -hmm. it's it's smart. It's a smart money decision. Why would you cap yourself at 15,000 or 16,000? Because these NBA buildings, you're not going to put 20,000 people in an NBA building anymore. Those days are gone. Yeah, dude. Everybody redid their buildings to for maximum profit efficiency, where now you have bigger suites, mm -hmm. you have more uh more um concession. Yeah. You like City Field Right, yeah, City yeah, Field's yeah. a great example. Best. Shea Stadium was what, 55, 56,000 people. Mm -hmm. Now City Field is like 41, 41,000 because yeah. of the suites, because of the concessions, because of the restaurants, the dining areas. Yes, they made it a destination place. Nassau Coliseum. Mm -hmm. WWE would, would constantly hit 17,000 people in that building. Yeah. 15 to 17 to 18. What did Nassau Coliseum decide to do? They scaled that building down, down to like 12,000, 13,000. Mm -hmm. And they put a bunch of suites. Yeah. So you're not going to be able to get those massive attendances in these arenas, but you get a nice stadium that you could put about 35,000 people. You've doubled your profits for uh, ticketing. Yeah. You've also now given you the option to sell double the merchandise. Exactly. Exactly. And listen, the merchandise is a cash cow, regardless of of how you feel about WWE and what they put out, even AEW. Like, listen, let's be honest with each other. Most wrestling shirts are garbage. But those lines are around the block. Yeah, yeah, they are. So I, I what do you think? Do you think this is a positive or a negative? Because people took this as a negative, and I was shocked that I, they took this as a negative. I think people took it as a negative because they don't know anything, and there's a bunch of dum-dums out there. Sorry, guys, but it's true. Um, I think this is a positive. This is, Listen, like, if you want to... This is cool because you're you kind of get a little more glitz and glam at a show. You know, like we always say, WWE isn't a pro wrestling show. It's for, for the most part, it's Broadway. It's yeah. a circus. You get a lot of cool stuff. Like again, when we went to SummerSlam, it's probably the biggest show I've ever been to. You know, SummerSlam? That, of that 
caliber yeah, probably, yeah. with that production value where it was it was shot very much like a stage production. Listen, do would you I want to watch that every single week? No, I wouldn't. Right. Because for me, I like uh, I, it, it. I get it. I get what they did with that yeah. show because it's a mega show. But that's their overall presentation. I think that's the disconnect for WWE versus mm -hmm. AEW for a lot of people is that WWE has become such a processed show, yes. which they should be. Right. Exactly. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It just it's daunting for people because it's not the wrestling that you know, which is mm -hmm. which I feel that also, right? Right. Uh, constantly. I think this is a positive. I think the fact, and it's also cheaper tickets now that yeah. you're going to be in these arenas because you're going to sell a whole lot more. So yeah. it's a kind of a win-win for WWE. I, we'll see what happens with the fans and how much of a win-win this is. But uh, more international shows also now. You know, I'm sure. Uh, Connor in the chat room actually brings up a good point. You're running the risk of weather with the open air stadium shows yes you are you know you are which is very unpredictable but i mean they've had a pretty good success rate yeah i mean that's the reality uh you've already had wrestlemania wrestlemania was fine elimination chamber was fine royal rumble was fine money in the bank will be fine it's in vegas nashville's going to be interesting because nashville mm. in the summer is very uncomfortable it's very hot baby <laughs> yeah very so hot and sweaty baby uh wales you know it's going to be cloudy it's gonna be wet. It's gonna be. It's gonna they're be just cloudy. Going to wet places, dude. Saudi Arabia, very dry. Very dry. <laughs> Where should they go? <laughs> like ideally, Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii. You want them to run? You know, Man tropical. There was there was a pitch that they mm -hmm. would run a beach show one time. This was like a year and a half ago. Somebody had pitched to run like a beach SummerSlam. Wow, not like a bash at the during beach. during a pandemic era. Sturgis. Sturgis. You want yeah. them to go back to Sturgis? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. You think I think this is a big deal for them. I yeah. think this is a positive. We'll see how Absolutely. many more they run in twenty twenty three. Eight is a lot. When is the last time <laughs> WWE ran eight stadium shows in a year? <laughs> eight is a Ever? lot. They they must have run these numbers, dude, and been like, "This is perfect for us." Well, I think they realize that you know everything is about growth, mm. profitability, and growth. And how do you grow a money in the bank pay per view with yeah. sixteen thousand of thirteen thousand people? Probably more like thirteen thousand people. You know, what about Canada? You could do Canada. You could do the, the, they have a bunch of places. Toronto, there. Toronto yeah. would be a good market. You could do Toronto. They're waiting to go into there. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Ireland. kind of messed everything you know, up. Um, I think Manchester, probably another great place to do a show. Manchester would be uh, um, Wembley, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Hard if they're doing. City Field. City. I would love that, man. But Dude. it's the schedule. It's the baseball schedule. Because mm -hmm. baseball's so long. Yeah. So the only time you can really run baseball is in the cold. I think City Field would be the perfect venue for pro wrestling. Oh, like like even like a house show. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. know, like a Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. wrestling show at City Field takes us seven minutes. Uh, we'll get a couple drinks. I love it. We're so spoiled. We're very spoiled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so very interesting stuff. What else do we have here? Uh, let's see. Moving on. Uh, apparently, a couple of more name changes this week. We have uh, Kaylee. You? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm the artist formerly known as Rich. Um. Kayla Ray is now Alba Fire. Okay. Casey Catanzaro is now Katana Chance. And uh, apparently Tommaso got dropped from Ciampa. So he's just Ciampa. Just Ciampa. Yeah. Well, Casey Catanzaro is a great name. It rolls off the tongue. You know, it is a fantastic name. Yeah. But you think they were like, eh, too ethnic. Casey Catanzaro. What is that? Irish? What is that? You Long think? Island? What is that? From Long Island? I know a lot of Casey Cat. I know Mr. Catanzaro very well. There's yeah, a absolutely. couple of them on Long Island. There's a lot of them. Uh, They're all in Hempstead. I, it's a fantastic name. I don't know why. Katana what? Chance. Yeah. It just that sounds awful. Sorry. Katana I'm gonna, Chance. I'm gonna move today. Uh NXT is starting the women's breakout tournament in two weeks, and the first three participants are Ariana Grace. Uh that's Santina Morella's daughter. Okay. Wow, really? Yeah. Uh Kiana James and Sloane Jacobs, who appeared on AW Dark as Notorious Mimi. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Um interesting. All right, we'll see what happens. Uh, listen, they're treating it like developmental. That's exactly what it is. That's what it should be. Yeah. Um, Josh Alexander. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Josh Alexander defeated Moose. I love Moose. To win the Impact World title at the Rebellion pay-per-view. Um, Long-term storytelling, huh? Yeah, Impact has been doing good with this. You, you know, they, they've been telling the story of Josh's chase for that title. He kind of won it, and then he didn't. And then, he, mm -hmm. you know, like he dropped it. They did that quick thing. Uh, they've done a great job at building him as like this very likable, hardworking baby face. Yes. His son celebrated in the ring with him and his mm -hmm. gear. I mean, fantastic stuff. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Um, really cool stuff. I, you know, I honestly want to see that, that I, I hate using the term forbidden door at this point, 
but I wouldn't mind seeing Josh get more um, exposure on like an AEW show. Mm -hmm. You know, because we had that with Christian when he won the Impact title. You know, why not? Yeah, why not? It's interesting what they're doing here. I wonder if that Impact relationship soured with AEW because, you know, for example, like Jay White is doing the Bullet Club stuff with Gallows and Anderson. Okay. And Jay White shows up on AEW TV, no Gallows and Anderson because they're on Impact. Okay. Who knows? Do you have any insight to that? I don't have any insight on the Impact stuff, I'll be honest. Uh, I just know that uh, the door's always open to do stuff. Uh, And uh, also in news, the inspiration, the Iconics, uh, are indefinitely stepping away from in-ring action. Yeah, what a shame. Yeah, what a shame. Great act. Great act. Uh, I, I, their release was fascinating to me. I was surprised by their release in WWE. Yes. Right? Because they invested a lot of time into them and they Mm. were a really good act together. Right. Like, I like it. It worked. They're genuinely very good Mm. friends. Yeah. They're both Australian. You know, it, it, it fits so well. Their whole duo fits so well. And they're like, eh, it's working. Uh uh. No. You know, and they would have fit perfectly with all the stuff they're doing with the women's tag division and even the oh, uh, yeah. the Tamina and Natalia stuff. Yeah, yeah. Raw, you know? All the very, silly shit. Very yeah. bizarre. You know what? I feel like, again, this is just hearsay. I do feel like sometimes, in this case, maybe it was, say, they pissed off the wrong person backstage for some stupid reason, and it was like... Or maybe they wanted to go. I, I yeah. don't know. I don't remember if they were the ones that wanted to leave or not. Hmm. I, I can't remember. Hmm. I think a lot of people were just fed up and just wanted to get the hell out of there. Um, what do you think about the, uh, Bray Wyatt stuff that's been coming out this week? How he's taking a break from wrestling, how his asking price was too high. Yeah. His asking you know, price is too high. That is that, is he, <laughs> did he force himself into like just retiring? <laughs> I think he sees it as like, listen, I'm not going to do this for, for money I'm not comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lower my value and he, I'm sh- listen, I, WWE invested a lot of money yeah. into that character and effort and R and D into that character. Would I be shocked if he never returns? Yes, I would be shocked if yes. he never returns to WWE. I, I, I think he will return eventually. Um, but the now we know, like, you know, he's not going to AEW. A lot of people are like, well, he should show up in Impact. I'm like, for what? Yeah, for what? And do what? Like a scaled down, crappier version of what he's been doing? Right. And that's the thing. Like, they can't, they can't produce that type of character. So off the top of my head, you have a guy like Ryback. Okay. Right. right? When Ryback hit the indies, he was like fifteen hundred dollars a booking. No, I think it was way more. Are you sure? Yeah, I think it was like crazy expensive. Um, but he was like, "This is my indie price, right?" Bray Wyatt's a dude who there's no indie price. He's not doing indies, right? Do you see? Do you see this guy doing indies at all? Like, if he wanted to, he'd no, be like, "Oh, no. like give me two grand and I'll be, no, I'll I don't be see Bray Wyatt." It. I don't right? Because it. it's like it's so artistic and I just, so. I just asked him what Ryback's rate was. What's I Ryback's rate? I tried to book him. Uh, oh really yeah so i don't know i you know what though that's a dude that's interesting to me right ryback right yeah what happened like what do you mean what happened like he never did anything after he left that was it he did some motivation he did the stuff. podcast yeah he does the podcast yeah it uh is it called, like, he goes it i can't Podme remember more. he goes this person goes i can't remember but it it, it was a a word that i cannot use on this on the show load Ooh, he wow. goes, yeah so wow Wow, yeah. I can imagine. I think I think it was like very expensive. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I would I would not pay Ryback to wrestle. I'd pay him to show up and like eat a full like wedding cake. I'd be like, <laughs> you're not wrestling anybody, but we're gonna man versus food you a little bit. Eat that cake. Eat, eat the whole cake. Silly, just silly. And shit the plastic like and the plastic grooms on the groom and uh, yeah, that's the end. The wife on top. like great outdoors or, or where, the partners on top. Like great outdoors where he has to eat like the the sixty four ounce steak. Yeah. and all that's left is bone and grizzle. Yeah. <laughs> Raw highlights: Bianca Bella retained her title against Sonya Deville with a little help. Carmella and Zelina. Asuka returned to face off with Becky Lynch. Now this is a great organic story between the two. Um, yeah, I think it would be a better story if Becky had the title. Yes, because uh, he she handed that to Oscar. Right. But I think there is an organic story there between the two, which is cool. Yeah, Damian Priest defeated Finn Balor. What, what the hell are they doing with Balor, man? Listen, do you think he's their kind of spooky guy, where he's gonna be the the, the... Damian Priest? No, Finn. They're both spooky guys, right? right? But I'm saying, like, do you think Finn is like the get for this spooky team? 
Oh, does he turn spooky to fight off Edge, or, or does he or join Edge? I mean, I I don't I don't think you would you could do that with him. I don't think it would be a good fit personally. What but would, what would you do? Their team, all three of them come out, f and makeup like kiss. Yeah, they yeah, basically yeah. turn into kiss. I love it. I'm into <laughs> it. Uh, I feel like they Finn Balor is going to be one of those stories, like that great mm-hmm. what if. You know, I think if he had not early. been injured with yes. that universal title push, okay, what would they have done? You know, where would this have gone? Would he have just been forgotten? Because that whole Bill Goldberg thing came about because of that. Or do you think he would have had that title and been beaten by Goldberg? I mean, I I don't remember that to be the case. I mm-hmm. remember that it was kind of like on the fly. Yeah. Uh, and it made sense to add that prestige with names to that title because mm-hmm. I know that they were working on that. So maybe the plan was always. But I mean, how could you have Finn Balor and uh, and Bill Goldberg in a match? <laughs> I would you, love you to could've... see that. I mean, but but it would be detrimental to both of them. You know, it would make mm-hmm. Finn look like a like a like a nitwit, and Goldberg would get booed. <laughs> I like that word, nitwit. Nitwit. Uh, I it's think one he... of my mom's words. By is the way, it? an idiot. Idiot is my mother's word, and nitwit is my mother's word. and and bird brain. Bird Those brain. three. Wow. Like an old school sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> Mustafa Ali returned. Yes, he's back. And beat the Miz. Cool. Yeah. And Ciampa attacked Ali on the ramp. That's a good feud. I'd like to see that. I think that's a good feud. Yeah. yeah. What do you think they do with Ali? Nothing? Uh, they're going to put a belt on him. All right. You know, I think they're going to put like a US or, or an IT. Too many on guys him. in this middle spot that <laughs> are not being paid attention to. 100%. You know, uh, I was listening. I can't remember if it was. It was somebody I was listening to. It was a podcast. And they brought up a night. Thought it was interesting. Like, what was a better developmental system, right? Like the OVW system where you had six or seven guys mm-hmm. or girls, whatever, that you paid hyper attention to, right? To craft, or is it their system now where they have like a hundred people signed and everybody's just working and you know the diamond in the rough? You know, I think it's so different now just because of the performance center where it's like they're they're training like real like athlete. At- not to say that they're not athletes, but like this is like a compound where you have every tool at your disposal as opposed to like when I see those old OVW clips of like them in that gar- garage in wrestling the, in the garage. Yeah. Everybody is so massively just like oddly ripped oh yeah everybody's jacked. right it's yeah. like every it's like the entire day was like sweat your ass off and just do push-ups until eight o'clock at night you know where now it's very much like you know you have a nutritionist and you have a dietitian yeah. you have all these different factors. mental health advocate and all right. this stuff yeah which is fine which is great absolutely but i don't know what what created bigger stars right because like you look at ovw and mm-hmm. you look at like oh crap look at all the people that came out of ovw that became big stars it was a different era i don't know if that's an even comparison you also had now was it chance that you ended up having in one graduating year you had lesnar batista <sighs> orton cena Bananas. And then everybody, uh, Shelton Benj- Benjamin, Shelton Benjamin. Yeah. and then everybody else. You know, Rico Constantino was there. Yeah. Do you remember the the hype for Rico? Oh, dude. Do you? I, Rico's I, don't, great. I love Rico. <laughs> does do you guys remember this? There was such internet hype for Rico Constantino mm-hmm. as this unbelievable worker. And my man's comes out as a hairdresser. And he comes out as a hairdresser, <laughs> which was fantastic. I got a question for you. This is very interesting. We're gonna get a little inside here. <laughs> Rico yeah. Costantino was fantastic. He was awesome. And then he became a bounty hunter, I think. In real life, yeah. yeah. He was a law enforcement agent. Um, so do you think because of like that nature of like Bill DeMott style training and hazing? Hey, come in here. I'm gonna put a garbage bag over your head and <laughs> kick you. There was a lot of That's an actual quote. Oh my god. There From was me. do you think there was a lot of like like ever like washing out washing out, you know, where it's like now it seems like it's more like nurturing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's way more nurturing now, but you yeah. also can't operate a business like that anymore, right. especially if you're a publicly traded company, right? Right. right. You can't have one. Uh, uh, can you, like, now, it, you know, the internet age, right? Mm. Everything, we've we've evolved with all the hearsay and all, yeah. a lot of accusations and all that stuff. There is a lot of good that comes from this, right? Even with yeah. all the, the nonsense, uh, I'm not accusing anybody, but obviously there, there people do make stories up. People right. do exaggerate a situation. Regardless of that, we have kind of reevaluated us as human beings mm-hmm. like, oh, shit, there are consequences for things that we do. Mm-hmm. And they're very bad consequences. So maybe we should act a little bit better. Maybe we should chill out a little bit. Maybe we should chill. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't, I don't know, shit in people's luggage. Yeah. Right? Maybe maybe yeah. that's not. Can you imagine now if that happened? 
Oh, forget it. There'd be like a fecal man okay. investigation. I, I, I'm giving an example, guys. And <laughs> and listen, I'm a big fan of Austin Theories. I think he's a fantastic wrestler. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, he if Austin Theory is crapping in uh, Becky Lynch's Becky bag, Lynch's bag yeah. you don't think that would be a like he would be done forever, forever. Yeah, uh, that would be it. His career's done. Uh, he would be. I don't know what he would do. But 20 years ago, people like reporting like oh and by the way you know you know like yeah. this and this happened it's a different time which it's is a fine different but, time. but back to back to what i was saying do yeah, you yeah. think it was do you think it's a better process and forget about 2002 ovw right like is it is it a better process to say okay the, these are the guys that we're going to work on these are the women we're going to work mm -hmm. on and we're going to create them to be the biggest stars possible instead yeah. of now having, you know, a hundred and hundred people or so. And you're like, okay, go through the motions and spot whoever's the best and then build them like that. I think that's a more corporate way to look at it where I think before the public, before the company was publicly traded, maybe they were just like, oh, this guy's a monster. This guy's great. Let's keep him healthy. You know, get him to do this, get him to do that, get him to do this. Now it just seems like it's such a rotating machine that hell, even if Roman disappeared, the machine will still go. You yeah. Know? If Roman quit, if Seth quit, if a lot of your top guys quit, they will still they have the resources to keep churning out top tier talent, right? As opposed to like that OVW era where it's very much sink or swim, and it's like you have to quote unquote want it bad enough. Yeah, right. It's very interesting. Up. I would say, um, I would say that we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen that star come out yet of the developmental system, the current developmental system for the men, for Bron the men. Braun Breaker? Well, we haven't seen it yet, okay. right? We, we haven't gotten that John Cena mm -hmm. because I would say, you know, the guys that we have right now on top of the business were not built on that NXT developmental system. They were built on, yeah. uh, you know, FCW, which turned into that. There were, I mean, even look at like a Cody Rhodes. Where was mm -hmm. he? He was in developmental. Yeah. He only did that. Yeah. You know, every uh, all these top guys came out of the system, but it's not it's not the same one because they changed the focus over the last couple of years yeah. for NXT. Cody told an interesting story online and I kind of I can't quote the source, but he said when he first met Randy Orton. Yeah, I heard this. Um Randy Orton yanked an entire men's urinal out of the wall. Now, let's say Austin Theory did that today. Yeah. What do you think the consequences would be? Oh, pff, not not great. Great. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's fast it's fascinating yeah. stuff. Not man. great. Not great. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, Randy Orton's 25th anniversary celebration turned into an RKO party. This, listen, Raw has been bookended by really good stuff lately. It's the middle that I just... It's always the middle. Uh, it's always the middle. Um, and you ended up getting Cody Rhodes, Ezekiel, Randy Orton, and Riddle <clears throat> defeating Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, and the Usos. Let me tell you something. Yeah. That Ezekiel shit cracks me up. I know, me too. Every single week. Why? I think both of us are fans of stupid repetition and him going... I'm Elias' younger brother every week with a straight face. Did you, it does it for me so well, bad. I like the tassels. Tassels, they're adding, I think they're going to turn him into Warrior, dude. Is it, isn't it funny? Doesn't he look shorter now without yes. the clothing on? He's not and wearing the beard? those big boots. Right? He looks a little yeah. shorter, which kind of like plays into the part, but hmm. he is looking like Warrior. Are they going to face paint him? He needs face paint. Dude. I'd be into him if he has face paint. <laughs> Imagine. Ezekiel needs face paint. Uh, the, they're definitely going to strap a fake beard on him. And be yeah. like, I'm like as Elias to be a like, Merkin, dude. They're gonna put a Merkin on his face. They're gonna Merkin his head. They're up. gonna Merkin his head. <laughs> uh, so you know, Cody Rhodes is eager. Randy Orton and Riddle beat uh, Rollins, Kevin Owens, and the U. So that's listen. That was that's a great like four on four right yeah. there. That's a good like send people home happy main event. By the way, I'm flying down to Puerto Rico. Okay, oh, I know why. Because Issa's down there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a pie. She's gonna be on the beach somewhere oh, when she least expect it. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to like sneak up and I'm going to be like I'm going to tap her on the shoulder. I'm just going to pie her face and get on the first flight back to New York. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm doing. You got to do more of a setup than that. You got to be like, "Miss, excuse me, would you like another margarita?" Would you care for another martini? Boom. Boom. And I'll just run. The whole island will chase me though. It'll be like one of those moments. Yeah. The entire island, everybody on that island is going to chase me to the airport. This could be content for your OnlyFans. <laughs> Just slapping pies in babes' faces. That'd be amazing. I'm not condoning violence. I think she'd be cool with that. I'm not condoning violence. We can do a collab. All, but I do think pies, just hitting somebody with a, with pie, a pie is hysterical. Is, it's hysterical. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
That was like a thing a few years ago too. Pieing somebody? Yeah. Uh, you wanted to skip NXT? Yeah, we don't have time yeah. for NXT. Uh, ratings five hundred seventy-seven thousand. Uh, what do you think of Nikita Lyons? I really like her. I really like. You know, her. I what an athlete. So that first promo that she did, where she was singing, mm-hmm. was so cringy and abysmal. Yes, I was like, my God, how did they okay this? Right, it was so terrible. Uh. It came off like, you know, you know, like the show Extra on NBC, <laughs> yeah. like that Mario Lopez show yeah. where like they do those vignettes. <laughs> the immortal Mario Lopez. The yes. immortal Mario Lopez. It was yeah. like something straight out of there. It was terrible. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they've done a good job with it. Uh, Joe Gacy uh, interrupted by Rick Steiner and Braun Strowman. Uh, Braun, Str- Braun Breaker. Uh, Gacy now has druids that help him. So uh, that's something. All right. It was fine. It was a, it was an OK. Roxy. Uh, is there now? Yeah, great. Which is cool. All right. Listen, I, I, I've I've gotten very disconnected by by this, but the Viking Raiders were on the show too. Yeah, they're challenging the Creed brothers. I'm cool with that because they're NXT originals. I'm cool with or, that or too. whatever you know you want to call it. They were in NXT. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. Spring break in is next Tuesday. You have a bunch of matches announced for that. <laughs> oh, <it's> spring breaking. <laughs> NXT uh, champion Braun Breaker defends against challenger Joe Gacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony D'Angelo and San. Uh, San- Santos Escobar have a sit down meeting. I don't care for that. Whatever. Uh, this week SmackDown pre taped. Beat the clock. I quit challenge between Ronda Rousey and Charlotte. Drew McIntyre versus Sami Zayn in a steel cage match. <laughs> steel cage match. In a steel cage match. Steel cage match. Hold on. This Sunday, Drew McIntyre, Sami Zayn, steel cage match from Grand Connecticut. From Bridge. Whoa, from where? From Grand Connecticut. Grand Connecticut. Uh, uh, can I interrupt yeah, yeah, for a yeah. quick? This is a good, uh, good segue. We got a twenty dollar uh, super chat oh, from. You, Shre- you know what? I do the Eddie Guerrero every time you give me twenty bucks. Very cool from Shreya Hashemi. Viva, hashtag Viva Las Vegas. Hashtag Mattman OnlyFans. Great to see Andrew and Rich back together like the Beatles. Can you channel your inner Vince McMahon and explain the reason Austin Theory is now called Theory? I thought it was a good time to take <sighs> that. We usually take <sighs> it at the end of the show, but you're you're on a roll with the Vince voice. There's one Austin. There's one Austin. You're just theory. And then he makes him into like, you know what he makes him into? Mm. Like a, um, the watcher. Like from Marvel? From Marvel. <laughs> I need you to have a big giant head. Get your head bigger. Get your head bigger. Big head. You know what? That would be a Vince. Like Vince is upset that someone's head is a little too small for his liking. And like, he keeps telling him to make his head bigger. Like a baby holding an apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Austin theory. Who's that? No, Austin. I took that stunner like shit. Do you think it's also like he's a businessman and he's like, I don't got time for two names. One name. <laughs> One name only. Drop the Tommaso. Drop the Austin. Tommaso. Tommaso. Sounds like tomato. I hate tomatoes. He does hate tomatoes. <laughs> I hate. He hates all nightshades. <laughs> no. I, and no stilled fruit. I don't want any nightshades. <laughs> Eggplants. Tomatoes. <laughs> no, nothing with seeds. Nothing with seeds. <laughs> I want great. seedless fruit. Oh, yeah. He loves peaches, but hates that it has a pit. Yeah, no stone fruit. <laughs> no stone fruit. <laughs> so ridiculous. This is uh, we're kicking it old school today, guys. I'm planting them all. This is what happens. You know, like that VMix chat is down. This is what happens yeah. when that VMix chat Sorry, is down man. because <laughs> it, we turn into Matt Man Twenty Eleven. Hey, Bad Bunny's in Marvel. Which he's is a great. superhero now. Yeah, yeah. Bad Bunny's uh, he's gonna be uh, El Muerte. Or Do you want to hear something. my Bad Bunny impersonation? Sure, sure, sure. You ready? Ready. It's a little. It's a little. You know, I do the accent really well. You do yours, I do mine. Okay, you ready? Go. It's me, Bad Bunny. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm from Puerto Rico. <laughs> this is how we all talk. <laughs> My God. It sounds like you're from San Juan. <laughs> it's just like old San Juan. It's a very regional dialect from old San Juan. It's like mm-hmm. a small section of old San Juan. They all speak like this. Like San Juan 1910. That's San Juan 1910. That's what like it is. Beautiful, sound. Yeah. pristine. Uh, My Bad Bunny impression is this. <laughs> or... <laughs> what is one noise? Or <laughs> Issa, Issa's uh, she's rage is, out. Yeah, yeah, steam is coming out of her ears. She's gonna be covered in Teflon when you meet her, just so like the pie slides off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So we're uh, spring breaking. Nathan Fraser versus Grayson Waller, Natalia and Lash Legend versus Corey Jade. Uh, you know, like <laughs> the Viking Raiders know, versus the yeah whatever. I got I got uh, the sillies today, by the way. Yeah, same here. Uh, Braun Breaker defends against Joe Gacy. That should be fun. Okay. This I want to say Joel Gacy. 
Or Joel Gracie. His name should be Joel Gracie. His name should be Joel Pearl. Joel Pearl. <laughs> Uh, Joel Pearl's. Finish- I'm gonna pie. I'm gonna pie him. By the way, Joel Pearl's finisher is called the Pearl Necklace. It is the Pearl Necklace. <laughs> that is his finisher. A hundred percent. That is that is a fact. Hundred um, oh, percent. My God, he hit him with a Pearl Necklace. Uh, and one of his signature moves is the uh, the Pearl Clutcher. The Pearl Clutcher. Uh, like a camel clutch. That would be that would be Enchante's it's a, move. It's a it's a it's a rear naked choke, but yeah. he kisses you on the ears. On the- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, beat the clock challenge. You did mm-hmm. Drew McIntyre, the Sami Zayn, Raquel, uh, Raquel Rodriguez mm-hmm. makes her debut. Yep. And I see title match Ricochet defends against Shanky. You know, can we start getting? What do you think of Shanky? Are you cool with him? I'm cool with Shanky, dude. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about something that's going to give you a little bit of a boner. Yes. You know, we 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 used to. Uh, you know, how many boners on, on the on the scale is this show going to be for you? A thousand. As okay, soon cool. as they, as soon as they announced it, I looked up flights and hotels and immediately was like, I think I'm going to the show. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna hit up who people from Wrestling Observer to get tickets. I want to be there so bad. I want to be. I don't want to be front row, but I want to be close. I want to be like uh, Highlander. The opening scene of Highlander yeah. when he's watching the Freebirds at MSG and he's just a weird dude sitting there in a trench coat. <laughs> That's what I want to be in Chicago. You know what's so refreshing about the show? Mm-hmm. I talk real serious wrestling on every other show. I know. Right? It's like I, I, I become, I become like a serious wrestling show I know, guy. I know. And I was never that. Like I always like I found the humor in all this. Right. And now like I do observe a live, and obviously I can't. I, I'm on the radio. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not doing that kind of show. That's okay. That's and then, fine. And then I love Garen doing and that. I, Garen yeah. and I have like a lot of fun doing, but it's more uh-huh. like analytical. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. Uh-huh. it's a lot of that. It's a lot of like just going over the stories. This is like, you know, because we're the best. We're the best. We're I love the best. It. I we're love the best. It. Every show. I love doing every show. I'm assuming the show you do with Garrett is both you going. Uh huh. Yeah. When he, you know what I'm going to do when you apply that super. Oh, just wait. Wait till I see Issa. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to two pies? Two pies. <laughs> two pies. <laughs> I'm going to do it on the beach. I'm going to show up in a Speedo. Yeah. I'm going to be super tan. I'm going to be doing this to my pecs the mm-hmm. whole time because I'm, I'm working out again. I'm yeah, getting, yeah. I'm getting already. I got the abs coming in nice, again. Nice. I got the abs coming in. Look at this I'm going to, I'm going to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to dazzle her with this. <laughs> okay. One by one. And she's not even going to realize she's going to be like, oh my God, that's impressive. And boom, two pies. All right. Uh, and then and then I'm gonna, yeah and then you're gonna pop up and do your bad bunny. I think you should do the two pies, but then have a speaker on a timer so that when you hit it, the Law and Order noise happens. <laughs> Like boom, boom! Like like something, some something bad just went down. We had Ice T at the club last week. Oh, perfect! And all I wanted him to do was just like readings mm-hmm. of Law and Order mm-hmm. when he like stumbles on a bad like like a horrific crime scene, and he's yeah. like he's like yo back back in my day, this was a Tuesday. <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs> every that's every that's every Ice T club. <laughs> back in my day. He's the most fantastic person I've ever met. He's a fascinating dude. Yeah, him and Coco, fantastic. Fascinating, fascinating. All right. They're immortal. They are immortals. Uh, Let's go. AEW, New Japan, Forbidden Door Joint Pay-Per-View. Oh, good God. Sunday, June 26th at the United Center in Chicago. Tickets go on sale Friday, May 6th at 11 a.m. Eastern. This, uh, very interesting, man. You know, uh, Mm. I got to tell you. WWE was 100% right on this. And how the hell did they know? Everybody knows everything. Because do you remember, like, I convinced the person that told me mm-hmm. that New Japan, they're not doing anything with New Japan right now. Yeah. I was like, I was like, they're not going to do a show with New Japan right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I get, you know, a lot of this is tying in, man. A lot of this is tying in, which is very cool. Uh, Tony Khan said that it will feature matches with AEW talent facing off against New Japan talent, Amazing. unlike the Ring of Honor New Japan joint show that they had at MSG a couple mm-hmm. of years ago. New Japan president Takami Obari. Yes, I think you got it right. Takami Obari. Okay, thank you. Uh, told Sports Illustrated a follow-up show in Japan is the next step of <sighs> ja- for the Japanese audience. That would be fantastic. I mm-hmm. think that's absolutely great. And you know what? Even Stephen Booken, right? Even Stevens. You got you got your guys winning in America. You got your guys winning in Japan. All right, cool. Very cool. Uh, AW is now also on New Japan World, which will play a part in this. So mm-hmm. now, Rich. <clears throat> Dude, I want to I want to get your opinion on this. Please. So you go. I know you've been waiting like two weeks to talk about it. I am freaking out. I will run to the show. I will run to the Chicago show. I will I will hitchhike like the Incredible Hulk with the sad music playing to get to the show. So I want to go. Yeah, um, I, I'm 
you know, I, I warned Jess that this will be another hot boy summer for us. Oh, hell yeah. All right. I just got to get my tan going. Same here. I got to get my pink Zoidberg going. <laughs> yeah, you get you get Dr. Zoidberg. Yeah. I become a, a Hulk Hogan hot dog. Mm -hmm. that, that's my that's my that's my level. Not for nothing, man. This this guy, I'm astonished at how well this guy tans. Like whenever you go to Jamaica, you'll send us like yeah. the, uh, the oh yeah, the, like the, the underwear like boy, the underwear boy, picks, and I'm yeah. like, yo, that's bananas, man. You've been you were there for like two hours, <laughs> and yeah. you're just like no, no, no. I get because I I've been chronically tanning. Yeah. since i was 14 since years old dangerous. i swear to god i've been going to tanning salon since i was yeah. like 14 mm -hmm. uh i just feel a lot better is that why you have two penises that is why yeah <laughs> the one's in the back <laughs> it's like a, i thought it was a tail <laughs> nope extra yeah. penis yeah. um i i absolutely love tanning and mm. it, again listen dude you know my family they were bodybuilders so yeah, like yeah. i have that i definitely have body dysmorphia you know like i don't okay. stop till i like i i resemble the rock mm -hmm. like that's my cut off with my tan so I I just feel a lot better, you know? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. vitamin D feels good, you know, yeah. I feel it's 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 I enjoy my summers. So I'm gonna be obscenely tan this summer. And I, I also wait. told her, I'm like, listen, I plan on going to a lot of shows. Like obviously yes. we're doing we're gonna I'm go uh, well, you may not be coming to Vegas, but Suncast yeah. is coming to Vegas to produce a bunch of stuff. I'm hosting that sweet party with Garrett. Mm. Uh, at the Cosmo for That's Observer. That's the only reason I want to go. Oh, to, for the sweet party? Yeah, that's oh, so the you should come only back. reason I want to go. Dude, you should come now. I want to hang off a chandelier. I want to while out. Yeah. You want to trash the sweet? I want to trash the sweet. Like stones? <laughs> I want to turn into a human gorilla. And <laughs> just... Put me in a gorilla suit. Yeah. You want to just come in as a human gorilla? Mm -hmm. so it put me in a gorilla suit. Big yeah. reveal, it's me. Uh, MG Geek says, guys, I've lost control of the show. You know what's going to happen at this uh, New Japan show? Mm. What? This is, this is, I don't know who's going to laugh at this one. Uh, the Tony Khan's going to show up. He's going to be like, you have Nick Khan. You have Tony Khan. The real forbidden door. Shao Khan. Shao Khan. Sky opens up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the cons. All the cons. Shao Angus. Khan. Angus. <laughs> Genghis. Genghis Khan. <laughs> Angus, too. You can bring Angus. Yeah, Angus from uh, ACDC. Why yeah. not? AC, Genghis from ACDC. <laughs> uh, His name's Genghis Young, right? Genghis Young, yeah. Uh, listen. There, the rumor is a huge rumor, right? Yeah. Punk wins in Vegas. Okay. Right? Main event for Forbidden Door, <clears throat> Punk versus Kenta. GTS versus GTS. So that, okay, so we were, we were talking about this like telepathically, yes. right? Because that's the only match I see for Punk also. Yes. Now, handshake, handshake, oh my God, hug, hug, we did it, right? Kenta and Punk is a tag team. One match in Japan. But Kenta's a heel. Just wait. In Japan. Okay. Kenta and Punk versus Kenny and Ibushi. Ah, oh, dude, I love it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Two Take penises me. just finished right now. <laughs> you know what happens when I get mm. excited? I just fly off. Yeah. Like Poochie. But, but, like, <laughs> but, like, but like the Superman video game for Nintendo 64, <laughs> terrible flying. <laughs> I just fly through rings. That's oh, it. Awkward, <laughs> awkward, pixelated fun. Um, so what do you think? <clears throat> I think, listen, I think the, the possibilities for matches are, are mm -hmm. fantastic. The, I honestly, I'm going to be honest here. I don't think they could screw this up, but yeah. I don't want to hype myself to the point that I think yeah. I'm going to get Danielson and Okada <laughs> in, in like a 60 minute match. That's not happening. You know, like that's not. I don't want to. I don't want to excite myself with the possibility of Kenny Omega coming back in June to mm. face off against Okada for like the fourth. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. But there is one match that should happen because there is such a natural story there. Because Punk has said multiple times that he's stolen his finisher from Kenta. Yes. Uh, built in, dude. Built in. Totally built in. And you know what? That's a nice um, non-mega main event. That'll satisfy everybody. Test the waters. Right? You test the waters, but you don't have to go to a Tanahashi yet. Exactly. You don't have to go to Okada. But here's the story. Last night they announced, and we're going to go into Dynamite now. Last night they announced that the main event for Double or Nothing will be Hangman Page and CM Punk for the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. Should Punk win? Yeah. At this point, you know, yeah. I Listen, don't I don't want to see Hangman lose it. I feel that Hangman has not had... A a solid. I don't know. I, I I'm, I'm gonna be a little critical. I've been a little eh on the Hangman title reign, and no, yeah. get nothing against him. It's no, not him. Yeah. I don't think it's him. I just think it's the opponents that he has to face mm. are on a roll right now, 
right? Like, who yeah. could he face at that pay-per-view if it's not CM Punk? That would matter big time. They ran through the Cole stuff already. Yeah, yeah exactly. Kenny is not... I mean, you don't want to go back to that. Mm. Danielson they ran through already. Quickly, though. They did it too quick. It's, it's really interesting. Mox? Uh, I mean, you could touch Mox again. I think, again, from... But Mox my, can't lose. Right, right. From my, from my fanboy booking perspective, put the title on Punk, right? Give him a decent title reign. Hangman will get that title. I bet you Hangman will be the first two-time champ. Uh, you know what? I think, that, I think that's a very likely possibility, and I'm okay with that. I'm cool with that. And then have those blow out big, big, big feuds, you know? I think it's fine to put the title on Punk in Vegas. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Have him headline that New Japan show in Chicago, right? So, <clears throat> or do you go back to Chicago and have him win it in Chicago? That would be cool, too. Okay, so I don't know what's more important, but you know what would be a fantastic Chicago match? CM Punk versus... Kenny Omega. Yes. Right? Because yeah. that's a mega... A lot of this also has a lot to do with ratings mm -hmm. for that third and fourth quarter. Yes. Because a little inside baseball here, right? Uh, I, I, Rich, you could take a nap. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i come back. I'll be really quick. There you go. Thank you. They're renegotiating a contract soon with Warner Media. Well, yeah. Discovery now, right? Because they merge. And... Discovery is on a roll of cutting costs. So, are they valuable? Are they? Do they have a bargain right now? Yes. Uh, Warner Media has a total mm -hmm. bargain, paying them forty-five million plus some change uh, for a show that's bringing in a million. Let's say a million, mm -hmm. right? Let's say a million overall. Uh, a million eyeballs. Uh, a million plus eyeballs to their channel every week. They're two or number one or number three weekly on that mm -hmm. station. Nobody else is bringing those numbers, and they have a bargain, $45 million for that show. So if they could pump that number up to $1.2 million, which I, I, I think it's a very much a reality if they start you know, booking mm -hmm. a little bit crazier. Remember when they were doing those hot shot like, week after week? You're like, holy moly, Like they're giving away so much. Yeah. Like If they do that a little bit, yeah, they'll get the number up a little bit, and it's, and it's great for your negotiation. But, I mean, for that hot program, Yes. You know, you start, you lead into September with this. Uh, either Kenny, you know, I think Punk could lose in Chicago. That would be that insane. Build, that would be fantastic. I mean, think about think about the heat on that. You could come back to him. Yep. Uh, you go back to the, no, what is it, November pay-per-view? The next one? September. No, September, October, November, December. Yeah, November. End of mm -hmm. November. What is that? Which one is that? I'm not sure. Which pay-per-view is that? Well, the next Chicago one would be in September. No, no, no. Not, not oh, after okay, Chicago. Okay. What's the pay-per-view after Chicago? My brain just stopped. Sorry. Uh, early December. Uh, full gear. Sorry. Yeah. I don't like that name. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's a hangman pay-per-view, right? It, that's how Is it started. It? Yeah. I don't like full gear. Whatever. Uh, the name. So hmm. I, you have a lot of options here, guys. Fantastic stuff. But start due to Kenta title defense. Yes. What else do you want to see? What else do I want to see? I mean, I want to see it everything. I do think to load that card up, you need tags and trios. Um, you can do something awesome with uh, Blackpool Combat Club versus like Tanahashi and a couple of dudes, right? Or versus yeah. like LAJ. You'll definitely get like that classic five on five for sure yeah. with, you know, AEW guys versus New Japan guys. You, okay, so give me, give me a Bullet Club Elite. And Hangman, uh, Cole stuff on like an eight on eight. Okay. Right. I have to look at that New Japan roster and see who fits in with these opponents. Listen, Dan Housen yeah. and Toro Yano. Oh, that would be ridiculous. That'd be ridiculous. Osprey versus somebody. Osprey Danielson. You know, um, you have the, the Empire. You know, you can have yeah. them fight somebody. Yeah, you have a lot of options. Suzuki Goon, of course. Like, Suzuki's going to be there. Ishii's going to be there, right? Like all the guys. Yeah. Do you think Okada will show? Or do you think Okada is like, I, I, I don't like, I, I think <laughs> Chicago Pizza to. sucks anyway. No, <laughs> I think you got to do, you got to bring Okada. I mean, this mm -hmm. is a historic thing. So yeah. Tanahashi Okada, I would expect to be on this in some capacity. Naito. Naito. Yeah. Your top guy. Yeah. Dude, do you know why he does that? Mm. He has pink eye. Yeah. <laughs> His eyes are getting stuck together. Got, got, got feces in my eye. Uh, Dynamite. Let's go into this, Rich. Yes, sir. Uh, the, Opening match from last night's Dynamite was a banger. The Owen Hart Foundation Cup qualifier, Dax Harwood beat Cash Wheeler. Yeah, Harwood looked great. 
Wheeler look great? Very much a Owen versus Brett tribute match with Punk on commentary. Well, you know what they did. You saw what spot they did, right? The uh, top rope schmaz? No. Wait. They ran the WrestleMania 10 spot where uh, Owen... So Owen has Brett's arm, mm-hmm. and he's, you know they're doing like mat wrestling. And he takes his boot and he goes like this to to Brett's head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brett goes like looks at him like an older brother would. And he's like, "What the f are you doing, dude? Like, stop." Relax. They ran that spot. Yeah. Oh man, I got the tingles, dude. Very good Do match. You know how I watched this match? Upside down. I watched it in my tub. <laughs> okay. Holding a toaster over your head. Holding the toaster over my head. <laughs> <laughs> this is the moment. I was in my. I was tubbing, dude. I was tubbing. I was tubbing, bro. Yeah, I was in my. I was in my tub. I had it on my phone. I have like a little uh, holder. Mm. I had a little glass of wine, and I was watching this match. It was fantastic. How do you tub? Uh, what do you mean? Bubble bath? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Nice. Jess was on the other side. I totally ignored her. Bath bomb? Bath bomb and bubbles. Very cool. Yeah. And I get super stoned. <laughs> I took like three edibles. It kicks. I'm like, I hop right in. Surrounded by plugged in appliances. <laughs> it's like, I just toasters everywhere. I need dude. this to be da- as dangerous as possible. Uh, I thought they ran a fantastic tribute match. Uh, mm. By the way, both wearing like Bret Hartish gear. A lot of Bret Hart for for a guy that possibly has is not going to appear, or for a guy who just like doesn't care. What uh, the Bret? No, yeah. but like yeah, last week Punk was in Bret yeah. Hart gear. Yeah. Uh, this week uh, Dax and uh, Cash were in uh, Bret Hart gear. I would love nothing mm-hmm. more than for Bret Hart to go yeah. to AEW and redo the Hart Foundation. I would love that. I shouldn't say for a guy who doesn't care, but like, do you think this is just like kind of like a honeypot to get this guy to like agree to something to start touring with them? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I initially thought that he was 100% coming. Mm-hmm. I mean, because think about it this way, right? They fired their manager and they said they're going to find someone else, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't that kind of the, the yes. that they alluded to? Yeah. Okay, fine. So what happened? Nothing. Uh, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So something, something's going on there. So Punk was on commentary throughout mm-hmm. this match. Uh, he made it very clear, you know, he he's really good on commentary when he's, like, not being produced. When he's on, yeah. When he's on, and he really gave a shit about this match. He was very good. He kept bringing up how he doesn't like these two, personally, because mm-hmm. they they were associated with the Pinnacle and MJF, but uh, that how fantastic they are, and they're great. Uh, Dax won. Punk comes out. Punk's music hits. So, mm-hmm. Hangman has COVID. Yeah. They were supposed to do an angle... Like a face to face that kicks this off, so I guess they they're not they're gonna do it next week, obviously. Uh, but Punk came out and they announced the main event of Double or Nothing: CM Punk versus Adam Page for the World Heavyweight Championship. Great, awesome. You know what? This is this a higher profile match than the Danielson stuff? Yes. For Hangman, why? Yeah. Because Punk's a bigger name. Because I think because I think is Dan- punk a bigger name danielson i think is really really going for it whereas punk i think is picking and choosing his matches and moments so yeah. he's got a little more luster on him and my and at least in my opinion you know what i mean um i think it's a more high profile match because you know punk is is he's on a tear he's doing commentary he's doing matches you know yeah he's showing up every week he's giving the people what they <laughs> want i think it's also like you have that whole seven year absence thing Okay, you know, yeah, and I, his, I guess so. I guess that that plays a big part in it. But yeah. uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think Punk should win. I honestly think Punk should win. Uh, what what would that do to ratings? That's a very interesting test for CM Punk, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. The draw, the draw power of CM Punk, because we saw what he did when he first came back. Obviously, mm-hmm. that was fantastic. Um, do you think it should have been on Rampage his return? Yeah. You think so? Leave it. Yeah. Love it. That was great. Why you don't? Mm-mm. All right. Mm-mm. Listen. I you... think Rampage, I, th- I honestly, <laughs> this is my, my own, listen, uh-huh. my own personal. Yeah. I think Rampage hurts the ratings for Dynamite because you're giving away stuff on Rampage mm-hmm. that only a half a million people see. Do you think the evidence of that is to but I understand draw more people? To, but and, I, yeah. Yeah. I okay. understand. Uh, I think if Rampage was on a better night, it would be a different story. The floating third. <coughs> nice. Sorry. The floating third out. Yeah. Uh, last night, also, the Blackpool Comic Club dominated uh, dominated the match with the Nightmare Factory. Dude, uh, big pop for Wheeler Yuta. Hometown hero. Hometown hero, right? Very cool. Uh, I like this team, man. 
Regal on commentary is also fantastic. Mm -hmm. He's so nice. The man with the mask. So good. He's so good. Uh, you also had Wardlow beating Lance Archer before Powerbomb finish. Can Great. we talk about the t-shirt, the BCC shirt? Sure. You know, it's a little too close to something else. The one Wheeler was wearing was super <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's hard not to. It's hard not to go NWO, you know? Or well, oh, that's Club. where you went? Where'd you go? No, I went somewhere else with that. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Uh oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 I mean that's a given yeah um a little NWO ish a little Bullet Club ish but you know that sells right yeah keep it simple um Wardlow did a four power bomb finish on Lance Archer and later on MJF teased uh, William Morrissey to take on Wardlow next week AKA FKA Big Cass Big Cass how you doing uh ba Bayside Zone Whitestone Zone Whitestone Queen Zone Queens is Zone Queens is Big Cass uh, Mr. Gonzo is going to have a meltdown because, you know, where there's a cast, there's probably an Enzo. There's me. I hope Enzo shows up. Dude. I hope so. I could, I could watch that building burn. You know what I want? What? I want 45 minutes on the microphone between Enzo and Eddie Kingston. This dog is playing a dangerous game with these wires. This guy's about to chew up all your HDMIs right now. <laughs> Would you lose your shit? 45 minute promos. Yeah. Of Enzo? Eddie Kingston and Enzo going at it. Oh, man. I would love that go back and forth. Uh-huh. No wrestling. One's just a Jersey them, guy. One's a Yonkers guy. Just them jaw jacking at each other. They're both from the same factory, though. Oh, yeah. They're absolutely. They're both made in that same factory. Absolutely. 100%. That, that tri-state area. Yeah. So that's it was Chucky. Chucky tri -state comes area. from that same factory, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess... So here's the weird thing about this. You know, Morrissey's yeah. been really protected in Impact. Like, he doesn't lose. So yeah. do you do some sort of, like, DQ thing? Possible. Mm -hmm. I think Morrissey comes out and then there's like an inter, you know, a, a whole thing. Give me fun. Hey, maybe, maybe he, uh, new enforcer. He's like MJF's new enforcer. Oh, no, I, I think, I think maybe they have a falling out with MJF. Like, right. Like something happens, a match is a DQ. He gets pissed at MJF mm -hmm. and they start fighting and then maybe you bring in Enzo. You could do something with, I, I don't have that Enzo hate that a lot of people do. Maybe. I thought he was very, <laughs> was he a great worker? No, he was terrible. No. Who was it that he did that baseball slide with, and then he got like all messed up? Was it was it FTR? It was Gotch. Oh, it was, was Gotch. Yes, Rollins. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Where he got the concussion on the rope. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. Uh, Jericho Appreciation Society had a sit down with Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. They agreed to no contact. Um, Jericho said he was going to put a hit out on them, and then Eddie pretty much confessed to murder, <laughs> saying, "I've done this before, and I've been down that road, or whatever." I'm just. Yeah. You know, it's not verbatim. Uh, and Jericho was like shook at the end of the thing. Okay. And then Jericho fireballed Eddie <clears throat> at some point later on in the show. That's fun stuff, man. I like uh, I like the Eddie and Jericho feud. It's been going on for quite some time. Uh, I think that's... What do you think they do with MJF like in a year? Where do you think he is? I think he's going to hold on to one of those secondary titles for an extremely long time. Huh? Like TNT champ for like a year. And they're not going to be able to take the belt off. Well, they, you know, does he, you know, does he need a title? Right. I, I, like the, he's the biggest question here because mm -hmm. you're going to have to do something with him. Like he's yeah. in a, he's a main player in that company for sure. Yeah. And they give him a lot, but the, when do you put that title on him? When do you make him that, that long haul, Heel champion. Mm -hmm. World title. Two years. Two years? In two years. Well, his contract's up in two years, so. Oh, maybe that's the, uh, the honeypot right yeah. there. Uh, and your main event was the Undisputed Elite, beating Dante Martin, Lee Johnson, Brock Anderson. Oh, not, that, sorry, that was not your main event. Uh, the Varsity Blondes with Julia Hart and Arn Anderson. That was a fun match. Julia Hart, it, that's the slowest uh, burn story with mm -hmm. her and her eye, huh? Yeah. Uh, we had Phoenix's return as well, which was pretty cool. That was cool. Yeah. Uh, you had the TMT Championship ladder match, which is the main event. Very Scorpio good main event. Sky with Dan Lambert beating Sammy Guevara and Tay Conti. Very fun match. A couple of clunks right there. Uh, Tay Conti kicked Lambert in the nuts. Paige Van Zant ran in. Um, Sammy missed the Phoenix splash. Both guys do the barbed wire ladder. It was, and the girls got involved. Yeah. It was a good back and forth and a good way to close the show with Scorp holding that title over his head. Yeah, uh, 
do you like the hot potato with the TNT title? Because I'm not I'm not totally against it. I, I like okay when, it. Yeah. You know what? It's a little different because I see I see people online. And they're like, oh, I hate it when they do a hot potato. I'm like, you mm. got to change it up every now and then. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Like this adds a different level of excitement for these two. And I, you know, for Scorpio to get the title twice. Sammy's had it twice. Mm. They could do this back and forth thing for a little bit. And it could become a story, you know, in a couple of years where, you know, do you remember that program between these two? With a, they were hot potatoing the title back and forth between each other because they were so on the same level. Is this the hot? Is this the hardcore title? No, I would. You know, I feel like did, did they do this with the IC title a couple of years ago? They did. But it was between two people. I can't remember what it was. It was like a back and forth thing mm. for that title. You know, the. I'm a big fan of the wrestler that's very possessive of the title. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like, they identify with that title. And their drive is to protect that title at all costs because it's mm. theirs. So when you have it back and forth, you know, I would love for... I thought they could have done that with Cody, you know? Yeah, for sure. With Cody, they could have done that with where, like... The, they did do that with Cody with the mm. back and forth. That title always goes hot potato, yeah. though. That's the thing. It's a wild card. You don't know when it's going to get... Uh, yeah. swapped i do think this is setting up for a miro return so and miro takes that title back i would love for miro to come back with, mm. for that title great very cool but it's not it's clearly not over between sammy and tay and Paige van zandt and the other guys yeah uh rampage tomorrow night you got the uh, owen hart foundation qualifier cup darby versus swerve that's gonna be fun hook versus dan Housen. gonna be fun uh what, is it is it a match or is it a face-to-face -face? this is a match uh, Jade and the Baddies versus Willow Nightingale, Trisha Dora, and Sky Blue. Keith Lee versus Colton Gunn. That's going to be fun. And you're getting ROH TV Championship uh, match between Samoa Joe and Trent Beretta. It's a good main event. Very good. Main Joe's going to murder him. Oh yeah. Well, you know Samoa Joe was just wrestling. I was looking at this. Like, look at that card, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's so good, Joe. But where do you put him? Yeah, he he's the Ring of Honor TV champion, but there's no Ring of Honor TV. Would you turn Rampage into Ring of Honor? Oh, that'd be cool. Do you turn Dark into Ring of Honor? I I I'm sure Tony knows what he's planning. Yeah, right. But I do think that they that would be a nice developmental system for them to kind of profile a lot of these guys that don't get too much TV time that are really good. Yeah, you know, to develop them and do stuff with them. Uh, we'll find out in a couple of weeks or a month. You know, I'm sure it's gonna it's coming soon. AW Dynamite 5 4 lineup. Undis undisputed ROH women's champion Deanna Parazzo versus Mercedes Martinez. This would be Deanna Parazzo's first appearance in AW? I believe so. Wardlow versus Morrissey. And the Owen Hup. Uh, Owen Hup. <laughs> Owen Hart Foundation qualifier match. Jeff Hardy versus Bobby Fish. Owen Hub. I'd All watch right. that. Owen Hub? I want to have, uh, do you want to do questions? Yes, let's do it. All right. Old school. We don't have the uh, questions built in here, so we're going to do it old school. Yeah, we're going to do it up. old school. Um, MG, if I miss any Super Chats, can you please add them? Yeah. Um, if it's you, a face-to-face, -face, by the way, not a match. If you didn't fall asleep. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's one from uh, Zachary Venero, 499. Thanks, bud. What's up, guys? How would you rank the current mainstream shows? Raw, Dynamite, Rampage, SmackDown, NXT, and Impact. See you in Vegas. Hashtag Viva Okay, hold on. Raw, Rampage, NXT, all of them, okay? Yeah, all of them. My, uh, personally, I would put Dynamite first. Agreed. I would put SmackDown second. Mm-hmm. Uh... Uh, I'd put Rampage second. Rampage, Raw, NXT. Uh, but I Raw's been good recently, so not this. It hasn't been so terrible. I'd go Dynamite, okay. Rampage, SmackDown, NXT, Impact, Raw. Actually, Raw over Impact. Raw over Impact. Yeah. Okay. But definitely, Dynamite is my favorite show right now throughout the week. It's yeah. the easiest two hours of wrestling. It's, it's so freaking fast. It goes so quick, dude. Uh, we got another 499 from Joel Wood. Thanks, dude. Do you see this Ali push lasting, or is this just a big troll job? Is he happy coming back? I don't know. He wanted to be gone. Maybe maybe they they addressed all the problems that he had. You know, sometimes that's all it takes. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. Uh, this is from Pratik. Why are they not bringing back Cyber Sunday, Armageddon, and Judgment Day? Maybe for, um, maybe for NXT. That would be cool. I'd like to see a Cyber Sunday. I don't think they'll do a Cyber Sunday. Mm. Um, I, I like Judgment Day. I could see. 
Biblical. Biblical. I think Armageddon. They, they're staying away from all that. Yeah, I think they are. I think they're staying away. They really did a lot of biblical pay per views in the early aughts. Yeah. Deadly games. Everything was like so deadly. Armageddon. Armageddon. Do you remember? Day. Do you remember that vignette uh, where like for, I think it was for Armageddon where yeah. it was like Hitler and Martin Luther King and JFK yeah, and dude. like bombs exploding in Hiroshima. Yeah, yeah. Recently, the master plan. I'm damn yeah. sick and tired. That promo, fantastic vignette. Also, Shawn Michaels fought, uh, was a tag team with God. Sh Shawn Michaels was in a tag team with God. Uh, this is from Joe. Has Bray Wyatt quietly retired? No, I think he's going to wrestle eventually again. He's doing movie stuff. He's got a movie coming out with like a horror effects artist, which is cool. You know what it was like? I think for him, it was like, you know what? I'll take like two weeks off mm -hmm. after this. And then he kind of enjoyed it. <laughs> he kind of enjoyed the not, not it doing nice. it. <laughs> it was nice. It was nice. Uh, this is from Orion. Do you have any information on who has WWE's attention in NXT 2.0? I would also like to know what they think specific, specifically. Say that, say that question again. I'm sorry. Do you have any information on who WWE's attention is on in NXT 2.0? I would also like to know what they think specifically about Yagato Del Fantasma. I don't know about him specifically. Obviously, uh, Joe Gacy. Mm -hmm. They they they're very fond of him. Braun Breaker, I mean, they think that he's oh, yeah, the next right. guy. Um, it seems like they're hot on guys, but not like real gross. hot on dudes, except for like Braun, I guess. Braun Braun's the guy that they're really hot on. Uh, yeah. you know, right now, they, they, it, right now they're in a testing process to see who who shines. And Joe Gacy has been doing really well for them. Mm -hmm. um, Is he a Raw or SmackDown act though? It's too it's too new. You know who I would say? Let him let him get comfortable with the, with it first. I feel like they really want like a Grayson Waller on the main roster. Yeah, they would. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Big dude. Well, they brought a lot of those guys up already. You know, like those guys are, you know, Walters up there now, and yeah, gnarly. Yeah, uh, this is from Balor Club, uh, Balor Club guy on Twitter. Good morning, boys. I have one question and one question only. Where is the Royal Rumble going to be held? I have no idea. That I do not know. Okay. But expect the stadium. Uh, this is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this next one's from uh, Matt Ryan Consulting. When is Don Morocco coming back for another run? Hashtag oh, ask Matt, man. I did a I did a test podcast with Matt Ryan. Very nice. Uh, we have a name. It's called the Northeast Triangle, and it's about old school wrestling from the north from a northeast wow. perspective. Wow. So we talk about the territories, and then it always goes into Bruno San Martin. I did mm -hmm. like five minutes of Bruno as a vampire. Wow. And he was unveiled to be the higher power. You know what? That would have been cool, actually. Isn't that cool? That would have been pretty cool. Ah, it's me, Austin. It's Bruno. That would have been awesome, dude. Imagine if, like, we're, this is, like, 20 years removed, and both of us are like, yo, remember when they brought back Bruno as a vampire? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, one time Pat Patterson and I were in my Cadillac. He's the one who turned, who made Gangrel and the Brood. Yeah, yeah, he made all of them. Oh, and Michael Hayes. Yeah. Was Michael Hayes a vampire when he was with the Brood? No, yeah. Michael Hayes wasn't with the Brood. He was with the Hardys. With the Hardys, that's yeah. right. Yeah, but he was a Jenko Dirt. boy. Yes, he was a Django boy. He was a skater boy. <laughs> that that is my favorite Michael Hayes. Yeah, do 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 shit. Like, forget about all that. Forget about this. Like the who cares about the pimp yeah, suit? Who cares about any of it? I want him exclusively in in 1998 Hardy's gear. Velvet shirt, Django pants. Velvet shirt, velvet maroon shirt, Django pants. Perfect. This is from uh, Elite Cowboy. Are there any matches which are dead set on happening in the AEW and JPW for Forbidden Door pay per view? Or are they still to be decided? It's all to be decided. But I, I, my personal uh, yeah. favor would be Punk and Kenta. Yes, and I don't know anything about it. Just my my own my own. This is only my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Masters, another five bucks. Morning, boys. Andrew, hope you're feeling better. Love the show as always. Thank hashtag you. Viva Las Vegas. Thank you. I Listen, feel much better. We're gonna have to add another hashtag. Hashtag Sweet Home Chicago. Sweet Home Chicago. How do you feel about Chicago pizza? I'm not a fan. Yeah, me neither. I'm not a fan. Sorry, Chicagoans. Are you talking about deep dish or like pizza? No, no, deep dish. Deep, deep dish, dish. Yeah, thing. no. It's pie. Yeah. It's a casserole. It's pie. Uh, let's see what else we have here. With uh, This is from it's not bad. Noob and Company 1991. With Asuka now back, do you want to see her work with some NXT 2.0 talent? No. No, not at all. I want her in a in an aggressive main position. Uh, this is from... Anmol Verma, I hope I pronounced that right. Do you think they do Reigns McIntyre at Backlash? So this is like up in the air, the Reigns mm -hmm. at Backlash stuff. And it kind of goes back to that report where they really don't have a set plan right now on what to do and how to do mm -hmm. it. Uh, I don't think it should be McIntyre. I don't. 
like you got to think about this, right? You put both titles on Reigns. Mm -hmm. You don't have a world champion technically because mm -hmm. he's mostly SmackDown, but he's been doing both shows, right? You know, on and off. Uh, when do you take the title off of him? Who takes the title off of him? That's do you the take question. the title off of him? That's the ultimate. You question. booked yourself into a corner here because he cannot lose. But he also should not win, uh, hold both titles for that long. Yeah, that's a fascinating question because it's almost one of those like, well, who's left and who's even at that stature to beat Roman? It's unfortunate, you know? no one. Yeah, he's no like one. he's like the king of wrestling right now, just because of how he's booked. You know, are you disgusted right now? <laughs> uh, this is from Frank Gradia. Do you think MJ uh, five four nine nine? Thank you, thank you. Do you think MJF is really seriously about to listen to offers from WWE, or is it just a ploy to get more money from AEW? Love you guys, man. Frank, that's a great question because I just had that discussion with somebody. Mm. Somebody over there asked me that at WWE. Ooh, fascinating. Yeah. Uh, not that I would know it, but it right. came up in the discussion. Uh, no, I think WWE 100% has real interest in MJF. Uh, Cody would sweeten that deal, right? I don't know if MJF has r real interest in ever going to mm -hmm. a uh, WWE, but Cody's there now. Yeah. So again, this if they put that title on Cody, and Cody gets a lot of you know positioning yep. power, and he could guarantee MJF, you know, MJF is young, man. He's very young. Sign him to a three-year deal, go over there. Do some really cool stuff and then leave again. Or this is all to negotiate a better contract because he's not the world champion on in AEW. Right. He's in some pretty big programs, but he's not the world champion. Uh, what's the ceiling in AEW for him compared to the ceiling right. in WWE if they book him properly? Right. I think he fits way better in AEW. Yes. But you know, you don't know. A lot of people would have said Piper wouldn't have worked in the WWE, you right, know, right, because right, right. because of his style and what he was doing. So. You know, there's a lot of comparisons here. There's a lot of what ifs. I don't know. Mm. I, I just know that they are. They would be interested in him. Seriously. I don't yeah. know if he's interested in them. Seriously. Same one goes for that FTR story. Right, right, right. You right, know, right, right. there's a lot there in the middle where like, OK, well, would FTR seriously consider going mm. back to WWE? They're having the time of their lives. Oh, yeah. They, in WWE, they were they were they were shaving each other's backs in the locker room. And they were about to be clowns. And they were about to be freaking uh, clowns. Yeah. You know, I think it's. It's very interesting. And this is just a positive for AEW because now it's like, well, you know, Cody came back as a star. Cody did come back as a star, you know, Big and time. that was because of his trajectory after he left WWE. You yeah. know, he made it on his own. Very similar to like a, what Drew McIntyre did, but not as, you know, I think Drew McIntyre had like a real, real, like interesting trajectory. Cody's was like that much bigger because he got put in touch with like the right people. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean that that's a that's a good story for the two, mm. you know, Cody and uh, and Drew being a program about like who who's who's the best at leaving and coming back. Do you want to do one more? Yeah, let's do one more. All right, uh, this is from Heather. Do you have any information on where Miro is? I uh, I think he's filming something. Right? Wasn't he filming a movie? No, I don't know. You know what? That's that is a good question. You know what? Let's do one more. Since, okay, let's uh, do some more. Since uh, I, I could leave, I could leave in like five minutes. Okay, uh, this is from BC Knight. Hashtag as Mattman. In your opinion, this is a good one. I think mm -hmm. this is a good end. Okay. In your opinion, what is the best wrestling T-shirt ever? The best. The best. Uh, I would say the NWO shirt, or or the Austin three sixteen, or the Bullet Club shirt, or the Bullet Club shirt. It's... Anything that's black with white font with basic lettering. Yeah. Is apparently the best one. No, I think probably the NWO one. Not the Austin one where he's got like two snake hands. I saw like somebody this. with that, dude. Dude, I saw somebody. <laughs> dude, he was like an Austin ripoff. Mm -hmm. oh, Shaved head. Like, he was like yeah, one of those guys. He was wearing goatee. goatee and he had this sh this thing. I was behind mm -hmm. him in an elevator. And <laughs> you were just doing that? Yeah, that's all I was doing. <laughs> I tried to take my phone out and take a photo of it and send it mm -hmm. to you because I know you absolutely hate it. I think that's one of the... I think that's one of the worst shirts ever made, but the only person who can pull that shirt off is Austin. He's the only one that looks good in his own shirt, if that makes any sense. I think a lot of these guys are the only people that look good in their own shirts. Like, remember when, um, when the Bucks and the Elite did, like, those hokey animal head t-shirts? Yeah. Hated all of them. Oh, really? You remember where it was, yeah. like, the deer head yeah, and then, terrible. Like, the wolf terrible. and, like, all that? No, thank okay, you. Okay, give me a top three wrestling t-shirts. Bullet, we just did it. Bullet Club, okay. NWO. Oh, is that, is that yours? I think, yeah, I think so. I think there's, you know what? I DX, 
me personally, I've always loved that first Samoa Joe shirt, which was like the fighting shirt. Oh, yeah, that was a cool shirt. That was a cool, yeah. like, SoCal Submission Expert. Like, that was a cool shirt. Um, it's tough, man, because, like, you know, your 90s shirts, you had, like, dudes' faces on them, you know? Like, the DX shirt that Jonathan wore when he was hanging out yeah. for uh, WrestleMania. It's, like, it's just, like, two dudes on Yeah. It, you know? Uh, they had a ton of bad ones. That's a good shirt that you're wearing. The Raw. This one's shirt. a good one, yeah. yeah. But I don't know if they sold this. Did they? Yeah, they did. Sell yeah. This. Uh, best WCW shirt other than NWO. Oh, there was a there was a pretty funky Diamond Dallas Page shirt that came the out. The DDP ones were were funky. <laughs> uh, Sting had some funky yes. ones. Do you know one of the most horrific things I've ever seen mm -hmm. in New York City? A homeless man wearing a Sting shirt from WCW taking a crap. Oh no! On the E train. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. Sting had a great shirt on his it's return. Stink. stink. <laughs> uh, Sting had a great shirt on his return to WWE. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a really, really cool shirt. And like, I feel like there's um, there's certain companies that do really good. Like, they're not officially licensed, but there was one company that did this awesome razor shirt that was just like black and white with like a little bit of pink, and it's just Razor's face. Nice. On one side oh, and like cool. the toothpick coming out of his mouth. All right, cool. Yeah, I can never pull that shirt off, but it's a dope yeah, shirt. Yeah, I, I just like the basic font ones. That's yeah. all. Or right. uh, Dusty Sucks Eggs. Dusty Sucks Eggs. Or what was it Piper Sucks Eggs? Piper Sucks yeah. Eggs, I think. One of them. Uh, Hogan always had good shirts. Yeah. It was Hogan. just font. It classic. was just, it was just uh, Hulkamania. That's yeah. a classic. But Macho, Macho had a good shirt. Yes. Macho had a great shirt. Yeah. Yeah. But Hogan's, you can never tell because they always were pretty ripped and like. I tore this, brother. Have you ever owned a Hogan shirt? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I have one right now. When you're, like, on you? <laughs> yeah, I, have, I always wear it underneath. No, I have one, but I cut the sleeves off. It's the, um, it's the Hulk Hogan. It's not, like, the yellow one. It's the, um, the, the, the Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali boxing one. Got, oh, okay. But it says, like, you know, Hulk Hogan, uh, whatever. Um, when are we getting the return of Sleeveless Andrew? Oh, uh, probably, like, in another month. Yeah? Yeah. No sleeves, baby. I get texted about that. You do? I do. About the no sleeves. About the no sleeves. I can't. I cut all my shirts. I know. It's very interesting. I overheat I, in the summer. I uh, I think the return of uh, sleeveless Andrew on Matman works. I have many different looks. Many different looks. All right. Are we done? We're done. All right. See you next time, guys. Later. Bye. Bye.